Assalamu alaikum. This home quarantine, being isolated from the outside world, is actually a test for the reality of our attachment to Salah. Today, I will give few things by, it's like a checklist, if you may. By checking these uh, things, we can judge whether or not our attachment to the Salah is as it should be. Number one, the Prophet ﷺ said, the delight of my eyes, the comfort of my heart was made in Salah. In other words, I, can, I feel comfortable, I feel delighted when I pray. Ibn, Ibn Hajar, may Allah have mercy on him, commenting on this narration said, Whoever has the delight of his eye and the comfort of his heart in something would not want to leave it, would not want to end it. Why? Because he finds bliss and joy in, in that that he's doing and his life becomes nicer. So the question is, do we find joy when we pray? Number two, the Prophet used to call upon Bilal and say, bring comfort to our hearts, to our souls, call for the Salah. Now, the Prophet ﷺ faced difficulties in his da'wah, hardships in life and difficulty against, from the people who were against him. And whenever something would uh, distress him sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would hasten to salah so is salah for us a source of comfort that's a question to be answered number 3 aisha tells us that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at home would be serving his his household but as soon as he Here's the Adhan. In another narration, as soon as the time becomes due for the Salah, he would leave to go perform the Salah. Now, when the time becomes due, or if we happen to live in a place where we hear the Adhan, what is our situation? Do we continue to do what we're doing until we finish whatever it is and then get up and perform wudu if we don't have wudu and then start the salah, call the adhan and then start the salah or perform the sunnah after we call the adhan and then if it's a, a salah that has a, a sunnah before it and then perform the salah or do we make it come after whatever it is that I'm doing? That's another check. The Prophet ﷺ said, The closest the slave will be to his Lord is when he is in the position of sujood. Asking Allah Azza wa Jal. You are in the closest position to Allah Azza wa Jal. And therefore, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so supplicate. So, do we enjoy being in sujood? Do we prolong our sujood and ask Allah Azza wa Jal from His favors? How long do we stay in sujood? Another question to be answered. The Prophet ﷺ said, the best type of salah is salah that has a long qiyam. When the person is reciting. The longer he stands up and recites, the better his salah is. Now, do we happen to be from those who automatically... After walad dalin amin say inna atainaka al kawthar al qurhu wallahu ahad because they're the shortest two surahs for example or wal asr or do we choose from whatever we memorize 
the longest surahs? Or do we recite more than one surah in one rak'ah if we don't memorize a lot? Check and see which of the two you are to know the level of attachment to salah. We need to monitor our salah. We need to see how fast we perform our salah. Do we feel that we're burdened and we just want to get it over with? Or are we calm and tranquil and uh, take our time when we perform the salah? Another thing is, do we feel peace of mind and peace of heart when we're praying or not? Uh, do we sit after salah to say the adhkar and that are legislated after every salah? Or is it that as soon as we're done, we hasten to go and carry on with whatever it was that we were doing before the salah? Are we firm on performing the uh, legislated optional prayers before or after or before and after depending on the salah? Do we maintain these salawat? Do we observe them all or not? Brothers, sisters, all of these are signs reflecting the status of salah in our hearts. It's an indicator, it's a gauge that measures what is the status of salah. So let's be mindful of them. And if shaitan comes and tries to ruin one or more of them, let's be hateful of that and work against the whispers of shaitan. Assalamu alaikum.